everybody and welcome back to another video in our two cars tutorial series now I've already got my cup of coffee so if you haven't already this would be a good time and once you're ready let's go so in the previous video we looked at the car movement logic and in this video we're gonna be looking at the actual code so if you haven't already go in your scripts folder and create a new C sharp script call it car movement and go ahead and attach it onto your car objects now I'm gonna show you the code but do not freak out because I'm gonna walk you through it step by step Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at some of the public variables. So this is that speed, public speed um, variable. So this is gonna be the speed with which the car is transitioning from one lane to the other. Now this is the public Boolean variable, which is gonna determine which car we're dealing with. I've just named it car left. Um, and now we have a private vector three called direction. Now this direction variable is really important because the direction in which the car needs to move is going to be different for the left car and the right car. Right, so initially the left car will be in the leftmost lane and the right car will be in the rightmost lane and so on and so forth. So this direction private vector three is gonna pretty much take care and store information about which direction the car needs to move in. Okay, so that's all I wanna say for that right now. Now these are the public float variables, min z and max z, which we looked at. Once again, these were the bounds in between which the car is going to move. Okay, now we have a private Boolean is moving. Now by default it is set to false is moving is pretty much going to be true every time the car is transitioning from one lane to the other. So if you go ahead and play the original game, while you are moving from one lane to the other, you even if you tap the screen, then um, it's not really gonna cause you to start moving back. So you cannot like be halfway in a transition and still start moving in the other direction then. So that is what that is for, okay? Now in the start, also, once again, um, these um, commented outlines, there. Well, this is something we'll look at a little bit later, so we don't have a game manager and so on and so forth, so ignore these commented outlines and let's just look at the uncommented code. So in the start um, function, all I'm doing is I'm setting this direction to vector 3.0. So irrespective of whichever car I'm dealing with, whether it's the left car or the right car, um, I'm just setting the direction to zero. And later on in the code, I'm gonna set the direction depending on which car it is. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. Once again, I want to remind you that this car movement script is attached onto car left and car right, and these both of these scripts are independent, okay? So um, I just want you to think about that when you're looking at this code, uh, if you get confused, that these are two different instances of car movement script, which will be running on two different game objects. Uh, and it can be a little bit confusing once I get into the code a little bit. Okay. So let's look at the update function. Now in the update function, we have a couple of other functions. Uh, we have a get input function, which as the name suggests is getting the input. Um, so for example, uh, if the user is pressing, um, you know, if the user is pressing on the screen and things like that, that's what our get input function is pretty much doing. Pretty self-explanatory. And we'll look at that shortly. And depending on what the input is, we decide to move. Now, notice over here, I have a check, so if is moving. So if we are already moving, as I said, this is, is moving is that Boolean variable which keeps track of whether the car is moving or not. So if it is moving, uh, then um, you know you can move and um, so on and so forth. So somewhere in get input, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting is moving um, to true, and then we start to move it, and once the movement is finished and complete, then we set is moving to false, and that's how that basically works. Um, so that's all I want to say here. Now, without further to do, let's look at the move function initially. Okay. Now then, <clears throat> in fact, let's look, let's come back to move and let's look at get input first. Okay. Since we're doing that one first. Now then, in the get input function, uh, I have a private Boolean can move. And by default, I've set this to false and it's going to make a little bit more sense what I'm trying to do. Okay. So. Uh, I have a if, if else statement here. So it checks if car left, then can move is so. And if car is right, then can move is so. So let me explain to you what I'm trying to do here. I want you to remember that when you attach the script over here, um, then you have a Boolean variable, which you are setting in the inspector. So in the case of car left, you are checking this one as right. And in the case of the car right, you're leaving this unchecked, okay? So when the script comes over here on each of the independent individual game objects, right? Uh, when game input, um, get input is called over here, it comes in here and it checks which car it's dealing with. Because can move um, pretty much uh, is different for le the left car and the right car, okay? So can move um, talks about 
pretty much deals with when the user is touching on the screen and which part of the screen it's touching on. So if I look at can move here, this is a true or false, okay, depending on this statement right here. Now, what is this statement? Now, this is what we call in computer science a Boolean expression. Now, input dot mouse position dot x, okay, this is talking about the place on the screen where you touch your finger or where you click on with your mouse, okay? So, for example, if the game was on and if I clicked over here on the left side, right, then input dot, um, what was it? Input dot mouse position dot x would give me the position over here like so, okay? On the screen, pretty much. Now, what it's doing is it's taking that position where the user's, um, you know, touching or tapping or clicking and it's checking is it less than or equal to screen width divided by two. So if I go back to Unity, oops. So if I go back to Unity, this right here in front of you is the screen width, right? So this is width and this is length. Uh, what I'm doing is screen width, screen dot width pretty much gives you the entire width of the screen, whether you're um, talking about your um, PC screen or whether you're running it in a, uh, on an Android device or iOS device, things like that. So screen dot width gives you this little length. And um, for the screen dot width, um, this point here is the zero pixel and it goes like so one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth to, um, to whatever the width is. Now screen dot width divided by two naturally cuts the width in half. So whatever that width is, let's say it's 720 pixels or whatever, um, you divide that by two and that gives you the dividing point right in between on the screen. So any clicks over here uh, will be for the left car and any clicks greater than that dividing point is going to be the right car. Okay, so that's all we're doing here. Um, can move pretty much just checks input dot mouse position dot x is it less than equal to screen width dot two um, divided by two so it just checks hey when the user taps on the screen is that tap on the left side of the screen and if it is then can move is true and if it's on the right side of the screen then can move is false in that case okay and in the case of the right car it's the exact opposite, okay? I hope that makes sense. Think about that again. Um, if you're dealing with the left car, then when you tap on the left side of the screen, this is gonna be true for the left car, but this is gonna be false for the right car, okay? This line of code is what ensures that only one car moves uh, and it is the right car, in fact, that moves at the right time. Okay, so we have can move here, uh, true or false. And now what we do is we once again check for user input. So input dot get mouse button down zero. So this is pretty much the left click. Okay, but luckily for us in this case, it also deals with touch on the mobile. Okay, so we do not have to actually go in at this point in time and write separate code for our mobile device. Um, it's automatically going to register a tap on the screen as a mouse click. So get mouse button down zero is the left click. Okay, so what we do is we check, hey, is the user pressing the left mouse button? And if he can move, uh, that is over here. If it is so for for in the case of the left car, uh, you know, can move will be true when the user is pressing on the left side of the screen. So if he is if he is, in fact, so what this means is if the user is pressing down and if he's pressing down on the left side of the screen, then we do the following or the right side of the screen, vice versa, depending on which which car this script is on. OK, so here's what we do <clears throat> now in the very start function, what we did was for both the cars, we set the direction to zero. OK, so we come here and what I need to now do is I need to decide which direction the car needs to be moving in before I move it actually in the move function in this function get input all I want to do is I want to update the direction in which it needs to move so the way I do that is I check the direction the current direction and I check hey is it vector 3 dot left so initially it's vector 3 dot zero so this one is false then it comes in here and it checks hey is the direction currently right um, but initially we set it to zero so it comes here in this else block over here. And the else block, since the very first time, the direction is vector 3.0, it comes in here and it checks, hey, is this script on the left car? And if it is on the left car, then let's set the direction to right, okay? And if it's on the right car, let's set the direction to left, okay? Think about this. All I'm doing in this little code here is I'm updating at the very start of the game, at the very start of the script, I'm putting the direction for both of these cars to be set to zero, okay? So the direction is zero. 
but at the very and then when the user starts tapping then what i need to do is i need to know that i need to tell the script that the direction in which this this left car can move is right and i need to tell the code that the direction in which the left in, in which the right car is going to move is left okay so that's what i'm doing over here okay so if the user is pressing down and if he can move then i ch i start checking the direction so if the direction is vector 3 dot left i switch it to vector 3 dot right so if it's you know previously going gone left then i switch it and if it's right then i switch it to the left but if it's the very first time that the car is moving if the game has just started the direction is going to be set to vector 3.0 so it comes in over here and it starts checking hey which car am i dealing with so in this case we're dealing with the left car and it sets the direction to right and for the right car the the, the second script is going to set this to left okay and ultimately in the input uh, what we do is we set is moving to true. Okay. Now is moving was by default false. If you remember that it said that we are not transitioning. Okay. Um, I should have probably renamed this to is transitioning. That would have been better. Um, but anyway, so at once all of this is done, once we've updated the direction, we can set is moving to true. Now what happens here is that it goes back here in the update. And since is moving is now true, it goes into the move function, which deals with actually moving the game object. Uh, which we will look at in the next video. But very quickly, I just want to recap what we've talked about here, okay? So, this line of code, input.mousePosition.x, pretty much gives you the position on the screen on which you're clicking. And by comparing it to screen.width divided by 2, you can find out which side of the screen the user is clicking on, okay? So feel free to check that out for yourself. Um, this is going to help you decide which side of the screen, whether it's on the left in this case, this is going to be on the left side if this is true, and this is going to be true when the user is clicking on the right side. And it's going to be false for the opposite cases. Okay, over here, uh, we are simply just checking, hey, if the user is actually clicking um, on the screen or if he's touching on the screen and if it can move. So what's going to happen is that when you tap on any side of the screen, okay, what's going to happen is let's say you tap on the left side of the screen. So the can move is going to be true for the left car, but at the same time, can move will be true for, uh, it's going to be false for the right car, okay? I hope that makes sense because these are going to be two scripts, two car moving scripts running on both the cars. Now, in the very beginning of the video, I said that it gets a little bit queasy, a little bit more complicated, but if you think this through, um, then it should make sense. So there's going to be two can move variables, and every time you tap on the screen, it's going to be different values. So for the left car, um, you know, if you tap on the left side of the screen, it's going to be true. And at the same time, can move will be false for the right car. Okay. And then it goes here and looks up at the logic. So in the get input function, all we're doing is we're getting the input and we're setting the direction in which the car needs to move. The actual movement will be done in the move function. Okay. So lastly, what we do is we look at the current direction and we flip it so we see that if the vector um, direction is left then we make it right when the direction is right we make it left and if there is no direction in the very beginning then we set it set a direction depending on which car it is so since in the very beginning in the first iteration uh, if you look at the car left we set the direction as right which means that the direction in which the car will move in next is going to be right and the next time when this happens, it will come back here. It's going to check, hey, is the direction equal to right? And then it's going to flip it because then the car needs to move left. I hope that makes sense. If this was a little bit confusing, just listen to this again and look at the code. And hopefully it'll make sense. In the next video, we're going to be looking at actually moving the car. Once again, if this was helpful and if you understood something or if you learned something and if you like this content, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.